talk about chapters 26 in Stand Up Yumi Chang by Jessica Kim. We are we are almost finished. Um, once we finish chapter 28, let's see. Um, we will be, let me just calculate. We will only be about like 20 pages away from the end. That is very, very close. So uh, I'm really sad that this book is ending. Luckily, I will be making a sort of like a Jessica Kim series. So every time a book by Jessica Kim comes out, I'm going to talk about it because, you know, Jessica Kim's books so far, they haven't disappointed me. So this is her first novel and her first novel is really good. And then her second novel is also very, very awesome. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I mean, it, it, it's uh, Make a Move Sunny Park, and it's very, very ex interesting and exciting. I, I actually like it more than Stand Up Yumi Chang. Sunny is another Korean-American girl. She lives in Southern California, and she's Yumi's cousin, as a matter of fact. And so uh, it's going to be very fun. Uh, uh, it's very, it's going to be very fun. So I'm really, really pumped about talking about that book next time. But first, let's finish with Stand Up Yumi Chong because I don't like it when I have like, like I don't know, a dozen books going on at once. And currently, I do have a dozen books going on at once. So anyway, let's begin Stand Up Yumi Chong Chapter 26. So Chapter 25 ended with a big disappointment, right? No, like after that 50% off deal, nobody, almost nobody came. And... Yuri reveals in chapter in the in the first chap in the first page of chapter twenty six that there's still six thousand dollars short six thousand dollars that's not small cash um, so yeah if you had been if you had been um, if you had been Yumi's parents what would you have done I think that uh, you know I wouldn't give up immediately I'm not the type of person who's just gonna be like I give up but I do think that I would reconsider. Definitely, I would see. I would look at my options. I would see what I can do, like what jobs I can get, other jobs I can get. Maybe I would do odd jobs, um, and maybe I would actually get another job, um, or maybe we can move back to Korea. That I actually that's sort of impossible, but I would also be considering San Jose. Now, if you happen to me, would you be super disappointed, or would you just be like, hey, moving to a new place sounds fun? I would be really, really disappointed. First of all, I'm not a big fan of moving. I like where I live and I like to be like that. I mean, I like traveling, but moving is a completely different experience. Second, um, it means uprooting again. And you know about, and, you, and Yumi has so many social problems already. And now she's gonna be the new girl all over again in this strange world, this strange other school. Third, yeah, I care about my family's finances. Luckily, I don't really have to worry much about them currently, but like, you know, I worry about finances. So if my parents are not getting enough and if we're falling in debt, I would definitely be very stressed out because my parents are stressed out and everybody's stressed out right now. So definitely, I will be very stressed out and I'll be worried and anxious. But, and yeah, do you think that you, me, and you know, the whole family, do you know they're going to have to go to San Jose? And, you know, even if they don't, theoretically, do you think that it will be easier for them? Definitely not. First of all, Yumi will be in this completely different place. I'm pretty sure that dry cleaning is going to be pretty hard as well. And, you know, her parents are going to be out of the thing that they've been doing out of their element again, right? Everybody's uprooted. Everybody has to start a new thing, and that's super hard. And... Um, besides, they still have that six thousand dollars of debt that they, they need to pay off. There's so many things that they have to do. It's it's definitely a struggle. Struggle. Um, and what's the thing that you've felt most attached to? For well, not most. I mean, because like I'm pretty sure Yumi also feels attached to a lot of other things than just a restaurant. But still, what are some of the things that you're really attached to, and why? Mostly, I'm attached to them because they've been around for so long. Just like you know, Yumi, she, uh, she, the restaurant was with her from her from the time she was born, right? So you know, it, it's important to her. For example, I have a lot of stuffed animals. Um, the reason I don't throw them away is like I remember playing with them for hours when I was a little kid, and I'm like, 
it just feels so wrong to throw them away after all after all they've been through for me and you know i mean it's not like i have a relationship with them still but it's just like it feels so wrong to just throw them away and let them rot in some trap in some dump i don't want that to happen um, now, so you know, they're in this like, okay, uh, one question I want to ask is why do you think that, you know, we don't want to lose things that, you know, we've had since childhood or, you know, things like that mostly, right? Like you don't want to lose something from your childhood, but why? Well, I think it's just because, you know, you took a, you had a lot of comfort in that as a child and you know, that comfort stays with you even as you grow up, right? Like in some part of your brain, you still feel that comfort and you feel it in you. And you know, as a child, you're attached and those strings of attachment, I think they never really like completely snap off. I mean, like a few types of attachments are probably gonna guess, are probably gonna snap, like the strongest ones probably will hold even if they get frayed and rusty and dirty. <clears throat> but then, Anyway, back to the book. So Yumi goes outside to take out the trash and what she sees is her dad smoking and crying, right? And if you have been Yumi and you saw that, how how hopeless would you feel? Like, you know, everybody is just so in the dumpster. It's like they're in a chasm of despair. So, um, yeah, how would you feel if you had seen that? I would hate it because like my parents, they are the people who, no, always know what to do. Like if we're in a hard, if we're in a mess, mostly they let, they can help me, they um, help get us out of that mess. But now even they are right now panicking. They're sad, they're, they, they're confused. They don't have anything to do, they're despairing. And to see my parents like that, to be crying, to be so down in dumps would just be very demoralizing.